What's up, everybody? I hope you're all doing well and having a good day. This video is taking a little while. It's it's been a little while since Shadowbringers Part Three. Some people were saying this might never come out, but but here we are. I've got some explaining to do, so let's get straight into it. It's been 84 years. So welcome to Final Fantasy XIV: Shadowbringers Part Four. Let me let me let me explain myself. Well, what was going on? Where have I been? I know. So. As you're all probably aware, there was a slight delay with Endwalker. So Endwalker got delayed by a couple of weeks. And this gave me a window of opportunity that I could get to the end of the MSQ. And I could be ready to go into Endwalker on day one. But to do that, I've had to put a, a an insane amount of time into just playing the game. So I've, I've literally just, just been playing every moment of free time I've got. But to do that, I've got through all of the MSQ. So I've got through everything. I'm, I've got the to be continued in the top left. I've, I, I've got through the raids now. I've done pretty much everything I wanted to do. I've got the characters that I want to play to 80. Uh, I'm ready to go. Obviously, that meant that the, the channel on YouTube suffered a little bit because I could only post like reaction videos from Twitch and I couldn't sit down, get the recordings together and just sit and have a chat like this uh but i'm ready now i'm ready early i'm ready a few days early so i thought now's the perfect time before endwalker to get this video out and i can't exactly start the endwalker series without finishing this so that's my that's my excuses out of the way let's let's get them on the table uh, firstly but yeah i guess i guess that means there's a lot to cover in this one so uh grab some popcorn uh put your feet up make a coffee because put me on the second monitor if you need to because it's going to be a long one let's get straight in Shadowbringers, part four. As always, this is a Shadowbringers series, so it will contain heavy spoilers for Shadowbringers uh, and the content around it. This will be picking up starting at the post-patch content, so 5.1. And I just wanna, I just wanna start by saying, uh, if you've seen the last part, 5.0 was the best thing in the entire game. There, nothing can top 5.0. Emma was like my Emma and Ard, but were like my two favorite characters. So the ending was flawless. So there was there was a real high bar, and nothing in the post patch could ever meet 5.0. So let's just set that the expectation there. The lows hit like a truck. Uh, I'll be talking about Seto later, but the lows hit like a truck. And then I think. If, if I had to summarize everything, 5.0 to 5.3 never lived up to the expectation I had in my mind. I didn't think Elidibus' story was quite as good as Emmett's, but that's because I'm a bit of an Emmett fanboy and I just I just love Emmett, so nothing could. <laughs> but as soon as we got out of the, the sadness of 5.3, I'm a huge, huge fan Daniel fan, which is, might be a strange, and, and a Xenos fan? Is this, are you on the right channel? <laughs> So towards the end of 5.1, uh, towards the end of Anedis Ida, and Anedis, Anidas, Anidas, Anidas Ida, and the, the, the dungeon with all these things, you start to learn more about Elidibus and how the convocation came to be. You learn about the, the 14th seat, or is it the 13th seat? The one that got vacated. And you learn about his sacrifice to become Zodiac's heart. And yeah, this was super interesting. I thought... I thought Elidibus, despite not having the same hype and connecting as well with me, I thought it was such a good written story. I thought to, to cover it so detailed in such a few amount of patches, like three patches, I think they did an amazing job of telling Elidibus' story. And then at the start of 5.3 is when the game gripped me again. It's when the story sort of it locked back into place and was like, right, here's the destination. Here's where you're going. Let's go. And as soon as they started telling this story of like the original warrior of light, um, I kind of had a rough idea of where they were going with it. And it kind of made sense why Elidibus was doing what he was doing with Ardbert. Uh, but I never fully put the pieces together. I thought we'd see some sort of, um, I thought it'd be about like a rejoining or something like that. Like what happened to us at 5.0 with Ardbert. So yeah, I, I think this was a really good way to for, foretell the end of 5.3 without giving it away too obvious. Uh, I, I thought it was really smart. But yeah, 5.3 was, 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 it was a really, really interesting story. And I thought it was told so well. And I know there's a ton of love for the 5.3 ending with Graha and everything, but this for me was the peak. This was the 
so good. This was perfect. This was such a good idea and such an interesting way to tell what they were trying to tell. I absolutely love this. They bring the, uh, I'm, I'm guessing by the one on the, the right, because I started in Gridania, this is the five Adventurers Guild people that he summons. And he, he, he cause yeah, that's the, that's definitely the Adventurers Guild woman on the right for Gridania. So the, he tries to tell your entire journey from start to finish. And I, I love this. It was so good. It was so good. You see like, the highs and the lows of everything you've been through and it was just so cool i'm surprised it wasn't the finale here i genuinely thought this was going to be the end uh, but yeah i love this so so good as someone who was a massive massive fan of heaven's Lord, probably like my favorite expansion maybe maybe not maybe maybe second to shadow ringers now but i loved how they brought in all the different characters and they they kind of shone to the different patches as well as just the main story so you had uzale you had um ruban it, it was just it was just so good Except for when, except for when a horse spot appeared. Oh, that was too much. <laughs> that was kind of, that was a sign of what was to come, I think, in 5.3. Pulling up the heartstrings, definitely, definitely hit hard. And then, yeah, it ends with the, uh, the big fight against Fallen Warrior. This was, this was, this was cool. I, I genuinely thought this was the end. I thought this is what everyone was hyping 5.3 about. And yeah, I was, I was, I was far off, wasn't I? <laughs> And then this took me this took me longer than I'd like to admit to understand what this was. The constellation crystals, I completely I completely didn't get it. I thought yeah, I, I I don't even know what I thought. I thought it, <laughs> I thought it had something to do with summoning a primal because there were crystals. Um, but yeah, the the tie into the convocation was 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 so good, so good. And they did it. I don't know how, but 5.3 was paced really really well because they paced it even like getting these. It didn't just overload you with one big cutscene. It, it paced you by making you run along to each one and get two more little notes or three more little notes. It was it was really good. Ooh, a piece of candy. 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 And I just I feel like every single line with Hythlodius and everything that happened here is gonna is 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 leading to something in Endwalker that I just haven't pieced together. And I, I feel like once we get through Endwalker, we're going to look back at this scene and, and and this whole area and just find more things that it was it was given us ideas about that we just couldn't put together. It, but in hindsight, I think we'll look back and, and really see some, some secrets they were telling us here. And then shit got wild. <laughs> This was weird. So weird. You were just kind of chilling in Yulmore and this dungeon just came out of nowhere. I really liked how they made a, uh, a dungeon out of reusing the zones, which I don't think they've done before or I don't remember it. So you had uh, you had like the mining area and you had the tie into the Talosas and then you go into Ilmeg and you have the, the big frog dude and just just that's like where the, near the sea is near like where the dungeon was it's just really cool how they tied it all in because you're going through trying to get back to the crystarium really cool i wasn't expecting it and then someone told me that the the bosses that you fight this is someone in, in uh, twitch chat twitch uh, twitch.tv slash medieval by the way um someone told me that the the bosses that you fight are jobs in other shards that haven't been put into final fantasy 14. so like jobs from the final fantasy series that haven't been put into 14, so like this one's a necromancer, and there were others that aren't real jobs. I don't know if that's true, uh, but it's, it's a cool fact, nonetheless. Uh, I, I don't know how true it is, but I, I believe it. <laughs> Maybe you can fact check me. Uh, let me know, is that is that a legit thing they did? And then a really cool thing that they added uh, to the Crystarium that I didn't realize is they, they put like bars or like magical uh, ASEAN barriers over the Crystal Tower, of the Crystal, the Crystarium entrance, which I thought was a really small detail but just really 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 cool stuff like that like takes take, takes a very small thing to do and some people would miss it but it just adds so much if you spot it i thought it was really really good also thank you everyone for coming out here this was really cool so everyone's come and say goodbye before the big fight this is this is cute uh i wish i knew what i was getting him getting myself in for here though and so begins tears bringers now i'd say from here on a series of events play out and every well most people will have a breaking point somewhere from here i don't know if it's going to be graha i don't know if it's going to be reen i don't know if it's going to be seto i i don't know where it's going to get you but most people will break somewhere from here uh i'll show you where i did but 
if you get if you get through all of this, the rest of five point three from here, without without having a moment, <laughs> you uh, you 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 you're, you're braver than me. And here was one of the most epic points. Oh, the crystal from Hotlodius. Oh man, the 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 last seat on the convocation was it was it Azim, Azim the Traveler? I can't remember. I think so. This was. This was phenomenal. This was phenomenal. Like I say, the hype wasn't there for 5.3 for me. Nowhere near 5.0. But the story was so good. It was so, so good. This definitely caught me off guard. I loved it. And then, yeah, you, you get the, the first ever Warrior of Light. This was, this was amazing. Sea of Sacrifice was a great fight. It, it was so good. It really was. It, it, again, nothing like 5.0 for me. But I can totally see why people were in awe at this point because it was it was like 5.0 and there was a lot of similarities to 5.0 but it was just a different way to tell it i feel like if you're a law guy this was your moment this was your this was your epic gamer moment this i, I totally get it i thought it was really really cool and, and then and then I, th this is where ah, this is where i failed that you you can record for four hours and then it stops and you have to record again and my recording stops in about 20 seconds <laughs> and I, I didn't realize so i didn't restart it so i haven't recorded the fight but it, it continues from here so ready your tissues because this this got me more watching it watching the recording than it did playing it live Oh, and the music as well. Oh. <sighs> if anything happens to him in Endwalker, ah, I'm going to lose it. Ah, I don't think I can take that. They can't do that to us, can they? Surely not. Oh, the music's so sad. Ooh. And then there were many sad moments scattered around you had the yule Maw with the with the chais you had the the moments with uh everyone in the crystarium you the, you had the reen moment there were so many moments designed to get a certain person and i'm sure if you can attach your own personal feelings and your own experiences easy, to these moments they're gonna get you i think i said on stream like the reen one if you've if you've if you've got kids i'm sure that one hits a lot harder um but for me the, the one that got me was was seto i don't know why i thought i was i thought there was i thought this was you know i don't get why it's so sad i don't get what's i don't get what's so sad about uh about Shadowbringers, 5.3 is fine. Why, why is everyone hyping it up? It's, it's not that sad. But this one, this one just came out of nowhere. <gasps> oh, how can this be? Seto, my old friend. Oh. You've grown. Okay. Yeah, this was this was this was really, really, really <laughs> came out of nowhere this. I don't know what happened. I think it's a mixture of Ardbert uh, being my favorite one of my favorite characters. Joe Dempsey, is it Dempsey? Uh, being like an incredible voice actor. And then the whole pet thing just completely caught me off guard here. Uh, but yeah, I well played. Well played, Square Enix. You got another one. And I guess that kind of wraps up 5.3. Big finale, emotional ending, and uh, yeah, everything back to normal, I guess. I I did this on stream. In, I did 5.3 pretty much one day on stream, from start to finish. And I never, apart from the one that I just showed you, never had like a big emotional hit. And then the next day, I logged in, uh, and I just logged in in the Crystarium, and the music was playing, and it hit me, and I, I couldn't play. I, I was just, it just hit me, and I realized that I never wanted to leave the first. I never wanted to leave Shadowbringers, and the fact that we'd bought them back was really upsetting because 
it's just been such a good expansion i mean it probably shows on youtube how little i've posted because i just can't stop playing it i've i've, I've played so much I, and it's just because it's it's just so good it's perfect it, it's been the perfect expansion and i it's sad to think that it's over um i don't know does anyone else feel the same i mean it, i'm glad it happened but i'm really sad it's over and i i, I don't want to leave <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. And we've had hype, sadness, uh, a, a full range of emotions. But here we got happiness. We got an overwhelming, just euphoria of happiness at seeing this. He's younger. He's how we remembered him. He looks. He, he looks all Sion-y. Oh, it was so good. This, this is so good. I thought they did an amazing, amazing job with this introduction, like slowly hiding his face. Um, and then here we go. Right. Best boy is back. Yeah. Oh, man, this, this is good. I'm so, if nothing else, I'm excited for Endwalker just to spend more time with the characters, especially, especially this one. And then, of course, we can't forget the ending. Uh, Meanwhile, in Imperial something. <laughs> yeah, this was this was a reveal. This was a reveal, wasn't it? Um, I feel like he was one of the most hated characters in Stormblood. Like, like I think purposefully they made him uh, like his face and how he acts, and they made him like a rich noble. They just made him unlikable, I think. And I feel like the majority of people didn't like him. So to bring Fun Daniel, bringing Fun Daniel in as him is just such a good play on that character. I think I think it's really good. I think it's really really good. Uh, the whole like theatrics reminds me a lot of Emma as well. And you know he's my he's my favorite. One of my favorite characters. Um, love love Emma. So I got a lot of faith in this guy. I don't know. I don't know where. I don't know where the story's going to go, and I guess after finishing 5.5, we still don't know. But I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful, and I'm excited of, of what's going to happen. And I think the fun and kind of unpredictable side of Fan Daniel does add something to what we're lacking in Xenos. He, he gives the... I think they're going to play off well together in Endwalker. If the, if the trailer gives anything to, to see as well, I think we're in for a treat here. And if we're talking about uh, Shadowbringer's sadness, you know, we got to talk about the best trial series in the game. This is hands down higher than everything else for me. The fights were iconic. The story was amazing. The characters, I mean, obviously Gaius is a great leading character for this. And then the characters they introduced, the auras, which is so good. And I just love the story it told, despite being really sad all the way through it. <laughs> Um, this was it was it was just so good. Uh, obviously, spoilers for the weapons trials, the sorrows of Whirlabur, Whirlabur, I don't know how to pronounce it. The Whirlabur, uh, the sorrows of that. Uh, yeah, so spoilers for that incoming. Obviously, they come straight out hard and heavy with uh, what looks like Nemesis from Resident Evil. This was this was big. And, and guys, how are they not saying big fat tacos? People are telling me they're not. How are they not? How are they not saying big fat tacos here? That's all I hear. Tell me, tell me if tell me if you hear any different, because I really don't. I've even seen the proper lyrics, supposedly, and all I hear is big fat tacos. <laughs> but yeah, these fights were these fights were awesome. Like the, the ultimate weapon's just iconic, and to bring it back here and just just turn it up to eleven and just just go crazy with it, just go wild with the story and just wild with the fights. It was so smart. Ruby weapon, first fight, just what a way to bring this in. And then it's followed by a uh, emerald weapon, I think. I think ruby weapon was the coolest. Emerald weapon had the best mechanics. This fight was nutty. Just you got you got the, the emerald phase, which was just cool and fun. And then you get this, the gold Nero. No, Nero, the gold uh, Gaius phase, which was just I, I, such a good throwback to him prey when he just turns gold and yeah, this was this was just so good. The mechanics of that second phase were crazy. I, I don't know if you can play these on extreme. I think you can, but I definitely need to because when you turn these mechanics up, ah, 
Well, ah, they're going to be good. They're going to be good. I, I really, I really think this is going to be a something I'm going to wipe on a long time once I get time to extreme them. <laughs> and they even managed to slip like a an amazing spaceship fight in, which which seemingly came out of nowhere. And I, I, I don't know why this isn't used more. There should be a there should be a mini game with this. There should be something with this because it was crazy fun. Yeah, uh, 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 this is yo square. This is good. Use more of this. This was so fun. And I'd, I'd also like to to humbly brag that cleared this first time. Uh, I was reading my tool tips as 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 told off to do. <laughs> but yeah, I, I did this. I did this, and I loved it. This was great. It was very refreshing. It was just something different. And normally, coming from World of Warcraft, when they add like a a bizarre new mechanic, like I don't know, you're controlling a tank for a quest. It's basic. It's like here's your tank, and you can press one. And you can fire a, a a cannon from the tank, and that's it. That, that that's your that's your interesting mechanic. Whereas this, you get a full skill bar of seven skills. You get a long drawn out raid fight and add phases. It's so good. I, I can't fault it. I, I'm surprised at how high the quality was and how much effort they put in for this one little fight. Uh, use it more. This is great. I'll play anything with this in. Anything where I'm fighting with this big robot, I'll do it. It's great. But remember, we're in Shadowbringers. So for every bit of hype and every bit of excitement, you need sadness. And sadness was delivered by a sweaty valance. And what a dick. This guy, this guy was, uh, wow. They know how to make a good villain. This guy was extremely unlikable. Uh, I thought what they did with the, the, like, the adopted aura kids and the, the evil... The evil villain Valens was just so good. How they didn't show his face, how they built him up mysteriously and then showed him in his armor. Everything they did with him was just so dark. And then what was that scene like burn the evil or something? Burn the burn the bad? Burn the bad? Something like that. That was just dark. I Not many things just silenced me, but scenes like that, I was kind of speechless for a little while. Really, really good. Really, really well written. And I, I like in Shadowbringers how they're not afraid to go to the dark places to, to show you the dark. Uh, and th they did it well. This this trial series was 10 out of 10. I think the last fight was the diamond weapon. And uh, all you really need to know about that one is I didn't have a clue what was going on. And I fell off multiple times at every opportunity uh, and spent more time dead than alive. <laughs> <laughs> I think for my own sake, I need to go back and do that again because uh, I, I struggled. I struggled a lot with Diamond Weapon, and I don't know why. Um, yeah, I think maybe I was too excited. I just I was I was playing a samurai, and I just get running off the end every chance. Not well, not intentionally, but I just get running at the boss and falling off. So yeah, I need to do that one again. But yeah, the ending, the ending to the ending to the weapon story was sad, really sad. You, you, you kind of got uh, Alphonse getting the revenge here, which was which was which was good, but it was just overwhelmingly sad because he's he's trapped from the uh, the thing where they transform into the into the monsters. Uh, it was it, it was rough. This I don't know why I, I don't know why this one I connected with so much. I think maybe it's because I like. I don't know, maybe it's because I like Gaius a lot, but yeah, I really connected with these characters, even though they weren't introduced for very long. And uh, yeah, this was this was a, this was incredible, but very sad. Um, yeah, so if nothing else, Square Enix know how to write a damn good story and just get you. Is is it, not many games have you excited and sad at the same time, but this one this one does it multiple times. They've mastered the art, and this this ending, I was so excited to finish Diamond Weapon, but. It was uh, very somber. Very, it was very somber excitement. But then there was still MSQ to do, and that was the Endwalker lead up, I guess, five point four onwards. And five point four was a bit of a weird one, in my opinion. Um, I thought it was a bit out of place. I don't know why, but it, it, it felt a bit strange. I like the idea of uh, a cure for tempering and the whole the whole idea of being able to cure primal tempering sounded really good, and it was obviously great going around with Graha. But how they did the how they how they went with the story was a little strange. Um, definitely wasn't my best patch. So the summary is as best as I can remember it is: you go to Alagan, uh, you go to Alizar, Alizar. Uh, you learn about the Alagans and how they 
cured temp in and then you need a you need a porksy that can create porksies so you go to Matoya's relic and you fight a giant floating pig um and then you you put it in a in a furnace or something you make it in a furnace and then you can make mini pigs and then you can use the big pig to make little pigs to cure tempering uh and gabu's there and then and then there's pirates uh and then you want to end piracy and limza the whole thing was bizarre i've got no idea where this patch came from uh, it felt like they were trying to do 10 things at once and uh i didn't get it <laughs> but it happened it happened 5.4 was uh so, such a strange wedge in between 5.3 and 5.5 <laughs> and then with all with all final fantasy expansions and and late patches they leave you having no idea what the next expansion is going to be about i knew it was going to be about xenos and i knew it was going to be about fan daniel and that's it and then th he just appears. Fan Daniel appears in his in his robe with a lunar behemoth and just goes, Here we go. And he puts on a, a really good show. I'm so I'm so into this character. It really gives me like like Emma Showman vibes. I really, really like him. He he reminds me of like Emma, but maybe a little more naive. He's not as cunning. He's not as ten steps ahead. He's just coming to bring chaos and he's having fun doing it. But I think there is something else to him that he's not gonna that he's not let on yet. I don't think he just wants chaos and ruin. I think there's something else to it. But I, I'm excited. I really, really think they're gonna do him well in, in Endwalker. And I'm glad he's there. And then it was time to do the raid that was so so uniquely tied into the story in a way that the raids aren't normally so connected. Uh, Eden, Eden raids. These were these were interesting. These were super interesting. It, obviously, this is already a pretty long video, so I'm going to keep this uh, as a real summary. <laughs> the full videos of these runs are on Twitch if you do want to see like every boss, every reaction, that kind of thing. But I'm going to keep this pretty brief on uh, Eden as a whole. So if I had to if I had to summarize kind of my thoughts on Eden, I would say. The idea of the first ever Sin Eater and the giant, the giant Eden ship in the middle of uh, the empty, I don't know if it's called the empty actually, the big, uh, the big, um, <laughs> the big white zone. And then you have to use primal energies, like the ones that Yuriange taught you about back in Ilmeg. And you have to use those to bring life back to the empty. I thought that was incredible. And I thought how they redesigned the, the primal fights based on memory was hilarious. I think that the, those primal fights in the middle were top tier, 10 out of 10. Uh, for me, I didn't really connect to the the Reen and and the Gaia story. The whole, uh, you know, the whole friendship and how about... It's, it, 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 was, it was a cute story, but it wasn't really my kind of story. I thought when the Primals came in and the Asians came in, I thought all that was was epic. But the, the Reen and Gaia friendship and... And the, well, 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 what they told at the start and the end wasn't really my cup of tea, but everything in the middle was phenomenal and the fights themselves were, were were just so good so good so overall i think eden was a great raid some of my favorite fights would have been uh the primal ones i thought how they how they remember leviathan as having two heads <laughs> it's such a good it's such a good play on the the fight from arr where he has a head and a tail and he's immune on certain sides but they just remember him as being a two-headed snake thing i thought that was really really cool really unique and I learned the hard way that uh, that gap closers don't care about edges. <laughs> they just run you straight off the end. <laughs> Titan was so epic. I don't know how. I don't know why they remembered him as a tank. Um, I have no idea. I, what's, I don't know what the reasoning behind that is. But I thought it was very, very, very cool. Very cool idea for a boss. And of course, he eats you off the end. He did me as well. And then when they started mixing the primals, that was just genius. I wish they'd have done more of these because putting like putting Ifrit and Garuda together was just so, so cool. I, I wish we'd have seen some others get put together because this was crazy. I, I'd love to see what this is like on a harder mode because this was crazy as it was. Ah, man, I loved it. I, I, I'm all for stuff like this. I think it was amazing. This is probably the third iteration of Garuda we've seen, right? We've seen Garuda. I saw Garuda from Final Fantasy 15 in the crossover and then we see Eden's Garuda. Uh, are there any more? How many Garudas are out there? <laughs> this fight was wild too. Iconoclasm, Iconoclasm uh, with the portals. I thought this was absolutely genius. I'm going to be honest, for the first, uh, I don't know, like 50% of his health, I didn't have a clue what was going on. I knew there were portals, I knew we had colors, but I didn't make the connection that 
what goes through one portal comes out the other. So I was getting so confused. I think this is absolutely genius though. So smart. Uh, it's so good because they come out the front and I got that. I was like, yeah, white to white. That makes sense. Purple to purple. Uh, completely get that. And they were, they were my favorite probably three bosses and out of the whole thing. I thought they were all amazing. When it got towards the end, when it got towards like Shiva and the memories one, when it got all towards the, uh, you know, the friendship thing, that whole story, that kind of lost me a little bit. The ending kind of drifted away from me. But the, the whole middle section of restoring the world and the primals was phenomenal. And I, I want to go do them again because I think they were just so, so, so good. And then the last fight that really, really has, has taken hold in my memory is Eden's Promise. This was this was wild. This was crazy. I, I, there was like a, a delay of of the, the, the abilities. And then you had, what was it, like six different bosses that you've just fought. And then you, she would call on different powers and they would have different reactions and you'd have to remember. So you've got to remember what, uh, you've got to remember what Leviathan's power was, which is that one. And then you've, then she'll start mixing them up. I thought this was crazy. I'm terrified of what this is going to be like on like an extreme or like a savage kind of mode because my memory is not great. There was only six things to remember. And uh, yeah, I was, I was struggling with it. So <laughs> I think this is such a genius idea, such a genius idea for a boss. And it's just done so, so, so well. So yeah, I, I, I want to see a hard mode of this, but I'm scared. I'm scared this is going to absolutely wipe the floor with me. And I'm just going to be a complete embarrassment <laughs> and a massive liability. But yeah, great idea for a boss. Really, really good. If you've, I'd, I'd love to know what it's like if you've like progged this when it was, when it was current and how it was, because it looks like it's just going to slap people on a harder difficulty. And then after about six months of playing the game, I've been hiding away from, from gear, like optimization and, and materia and, and what's best and all this kind of thing. I find it all too confusing and I, I thought it wasn't greatly explained, but I thought, you know, Endwalker's coming, I'm going to have to learn how to gear up, I'm going to have to learn materia, so I thought I'd do it now. So with the help of a few friends, they gave me some materia that works and they gave me a lot of advice. I had a lot of help here and I started materia my gear. Obviously, it's all going to be fairly obsolete really soon in Endwalker, but it's good to know how it works. I think, I find, I don't know why, but I find the stats quite confusing in uh, in Final Fantasy XIV. I don't know if that's common or if that's just a me issue, but coming from World of Warcraft, if I'm, if I'm punching stuff in the face, I want strength. Like if I'm, if I'm standing in the back throwing magic, I want intelligence. And that's, that's it broadly. That's, that's your main stat priority. And it's really simple. Whereas coming into, Coming into Final Fantasy, it's like, oh, you want to be putting direct hit and crit, or you want to be putting spell speed or skill speed. I I know it sounds simple, but coming from a simpler system, <laughs> it sounds confusing. And then you've got like limits to how much material you can put on gear based on what's there. I, I don't know. It, it, it's, it was really overwhelming and I completely ignored it for six months. But after I've done it, it's actually really simple and I wish I'd been doing it sooner. So yeah, long story short, if, you, if, you, if you're worried by materia, just get some help, work it out, and it's not that complicated. <laughs> well, if, 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 you're, if, if you're not confused by materia, you're probably much smarter than me. <laughs> now let's talk about the end. Let's talk about the end of the story. Let's get back to it. Right. If you had to ask me what the perfect ending to an expansion would be, or what the perfect build up to Endwalker would be, it would have two things. It would have Asians, and it would have dragons. <laughs> and here we are. Here we are. You get the dragon dungeon leading up to Estinian and the, the the big mother dragon. This was so good. This was so good. And it's all building up to, it's all building up to the big war. You've got the, the, the towers that have popped up out of nowhere and you're getting the dragon's help. And it was just, it was just such an epic finale that came out of nowhere. I'm surprised how well they tied in the expansion so they tied in like stormblood stuff arr stuff um heaven's ward things and they tied up so many loose ends and then at the same time directed them all into endwalker in such a way that works i thought that was genius i'm surprised that you got to take out luna bahama in in the end of a dungeon i was expecting some like mad trial for this but I, I i guess it all made sense once you see this solo instance that comes after because yeah that was that was wild but this this dungeon definitely came out of nowhere because I wasn't expecting him to be the final boss. Uh, but yeah, either way, very, very, very cool. And then you have like the true build up to Endwalker. You have the the the, the keying in to Charlian and what happened with the the forum and you got to meet the twins 
dad this was this was dark i've covered this in my reaction video and in my endwalker predictions video which i can link down below i think there's a lot more to charlian than we're letting on and i think how he disowned these kids didn't make sense i don't think it makes sense i think he's trying to protect them or i think he knows something that we don't and we're gonna find out in endwalker i really don't think he's just a dick i don't think he's just being a dick because he doesn't agree or because they broke the rules. I think there's a lot more to this, and I think he's much smarter than we've given him credit for. Maybe that's unpopular opinion. Maybe he is just hated. But I think there's a lot more to this, uh, and he's just seen as, as, as being mean to protect them or being mean to hide them from the truth that he doesn't want them to see. So I, I'm so ready to go to Charlian. Uh, if you've seen the trailer, you know who's hiding in Charlian as well in the, in the library. I'm ready. I'm ready to see this. I'm so excited. But this scene was kind of wild. And then, yeah, you had the uh, you had the epic the, the solo instances. I'm I'm not a big fan of all solo instances. I think some are done very well, some are done very bad. I think when you get to play as another character, genuinely, it's really good. But then I didn't think they handled it great in the role quests. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm very 50 50 on whether these instance duties are fun. Um, and it's really divisive. Either love them or hate them. But I thought this final one, this big one, where you get to play as every single team, and then finally you get to play as yourself, was done perfectly. I think it was amazing. I've always wanted to play as Alize. Um, and I, I just thought everything here, and then you had the Graha bit as well. Everything here was just so, so, so good. And it built the hype for the ending. And, and the ending was very, very, uh, very short. They did not give much away. But, uh, yeah, this solo instance was a 10 out of 10 in my books. I'd love to know what you think, because I know a lot of people struggled here, um, and a lot of people didn't like it. Especially in Twitch chat when I was when I was playing it, a lot of people were like, oh no, he's here, he's not going to enjoy this. I loved it. I thought it was amazing. I thought it was done perfectly. So, yeah, what did you think of this big this big finale? And now, the final, the final, final, final bit of this entire story. Xenos and Fandaniel. Now, historically, whenever I talk about Xenos, people probably cringe or they turn off or they, they they brace themselves for a big long ramp because I've never said anything good about Xenos. I think he's a bore, uh, a drag and a real, a real bad part of the game. I've never found him interesting, but I've got to be honest right here at the very ending when he's, when he's kitted out in his new look, he's, he's got the new job. He's got the Reaper scythe and his, his mood seems to have changed. He's looking to bring chaos, to destroy the world, to, to, to do anything possible to get to us. And he's not sat in his chair. Something about this scene, and then again in the trailer, has got me really excited for this new direction of where they're going to take Endwalker Xenos. Uh, it, and like I say, I never thought I'd be turned around to liking Xenos. And this really got me. This really got me to the edge of my seat and got me excited. What's the gateway of the gods? What's the dreamer? What's his plan? What's his goal? How's he going to do it? I, I, I don't know. I, I love how they did this scene. And I think if they continue his character like this, he's going to be incredible in Endwalker. Uh, you, you can check. This is this is really me. This is not this is not a different channel. I'm really saying this. <laughs> but is any anyone else the same? Is anybody else had a bit of a character change on Xenos, or do people still hate him, or have you always loved him? I would like to know because he is so divisive. And every time he comes up in like Twitch chat and we talk about him, it's so divisive on like love and hate. And uh, I think that's it. I think we've covered everything. I think we've covered everything. I've been talking nonstop for over an hour, so I'm gonna have to edit that down. I don't know how long this video is gonna be in, but I feel like I've been talking for about an hour and a half. <laughs> so yeah, future me, good luck with editing this down. Um, yeah, we've covered five, five point five five of worth of patches. Uh, Eden, uh, the weapons quest line, the, the sorrows of Wurla Wurla. And uh, that's it, that's it, right? That's everything. The only thing I haven't talked about in this video is Nia, and that's because we only did it a few days ago. And I still haven't got around to like organizing the, the, the video, the VODs and the clips and stuff to get it into a video. So that's the only thing not in here. But hopefully we've covered everything else. So Shadowbringers, how was it? How was Shadowbringers? It was fucking incredible. <laughs> it was so good. It was so good, wasn't it? I mean, it, I've never posted so little on YouTube than in the last month. And that's because I've not been able to stop playing. I just, I just can't stop. It's just so good. It's just so good. Everything was perfect. There was, um, I find it so hard to criticize. And when I'm criticizing something in Shadowbringers, 
it's because it's like an 8 out of 10 instead of the, the normal 10 out of 10, which is the bar they've set themselves. It's the, the story, phenomenal. One thing that's never got me in an MMO is the music. The music, start to finish, amazing. Every every zone had had like music that was iconic to that zone. Every moment, it had the sad music that just tied into the, to the sad scene perfectly. There's a hype moment, it had hype music that tied into the scene perfectly. The music in this game is phenomenal. It had some real tear-jerking, heartstring moments. It had some epic edge of your seat, screaming at the TV, screaming at the, the screen moments. The, I, I don't know how they'll ever top this expansion. And my only regret for Shadowbringers is that I haven't played it sooner. In that I haven't started Final Fantasy like five years ago, so I could play more. <laughs> it, I'm sad to leave Shadowbringers. It's been the one of the best couple of months I've ever spent in an MMORPG, and I'm just I'm just so invested now. I don't know how they're going to top it in Endwalker, and I don't even care. I, they, they can never take the Shadowbringers experience away. They can never take what we've done with these characters, what we've done with these zones, the people, the raids, the dungeons, the trials. They can never take it away. So no matter how it ends, no matter where we go in Endwalker, I'm grateful for this experience. I think it's been amazing. But on a positive note, I think Endwalker's going to be a banger. <laughs> I think Endwalker's going to be so good. Um, my, only, my only worry and fear going into Endwalker was that I didn't like where they were going with Xenos and the Garlean Empire. Uh, like Gar Garlemald, Garlemald. Uh, I didn't like where they were going with that, but hey, they've even won me over there. They've even won me over there. So hands off, hands, right, right, you know, praise to the writer, praise to the voice actor, animators, everything. They've they've somehow even redeemed that for me. So I, I've got no, I've got no worries going into Endwalker. I, I've got faith in the writer. I think absolute hero. Um, the direction of this game is just getting better and better. So I'm. I'm optimistic. In terms of this channel, if you're still here, by the way, well done. You've listened to me talk for for, for, for far longer than anyone should ever have to listen to me talk. <laughs> but um, if you're still here, the plans for this channel, I mean, Endwalker's coming, right? So there's going to be an Endwalker series. I'm going to try and release more shorter videos. I, after today, after realizing I had about 30 to, I don't know, 50 hours of recording that I had to somehow put together, it was kind of painful. I want to release more videos. I want to, I'm going to try my best to play less Endwalker so I can make more videos. Um, but, but I'm going to try and hope that the story doesn't zip me in as much as this one has. I'm going to try and release videos on more, at least weekly like last time. Um, there's no rush, I guess. There's no, there's no sudden imminent expansion to worry about. But yeah, uh, the Endwalker series will be starting very soon, I guess. It's out in a couple of days, in a day, a day or two. Um, so yeah, Endwalker series soon. And then, yeah, who knows where we go from there? There's, there's, there's seven plus years of content to play and I want to play it all. I'm fully into it. I'm fully invested. So I'm going nowhere. Other than that, I think we're going to wrap the video up here. I got a bit of a sore throat. I want to get some sleep. Take care, everybody. I hope you've had a good, I hope you've had a good time. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Drop a like if you have. That helps me out a hell of a lot. Drop a comment on... I think I've asked a lot of questions in this video. So drop a comment if you've got any, anything you want to input. If there's anything different you want to see in the Endwalker series, let me know. If there's anything in particular you want to see from me, let me know. If you've got anything you want to talk about in Endwalker, let me know. Other than that, take care. Look after yourselves. And forge ahead. I'll see you on the moon. <laughs>